The devil is in the details, so make sure you pay close attention to the details when setting up your Shopify settings. I'm Zach Hall, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your Shopify backend, all the settings, all the important things that you have to have on your store. So make sure to watch this video until the end because the entire thing is going to be important, relevant information that you're going to need to have if you want your settings on your Shopify store to be set up correctly. So without further ado, let's jump into my computer. Yeah, anyways, today here we're going over the settings and we're going to set everything up here. So I'm in the settings tab of Shopify right now. If you're uh, new to Shopify and you're not familiar where this is at, uh, just go over to Shopify. If you haven't signed up yet, I have another video previous to this one that uh, goes through the sign up process. So you sign up for it, you'll get into the admin side of it here. Just go down to settings at the bottom, click on that. And yeah, let's just start jumping into this thing. So uh, very first one we're going to go through is general. So we'll click on that. And this is just a trial store, by the way. It's not an active store that I'm actively using yet. I will in the future, but right now it's still in its trial phase, actually, as you can see down there. So all the settings are fresh. I've tampered with a little bit of them, but I'm going to show you what I've done so far to it. And, uh, yeah, let's go through this and follow along with me, take some notes. Make sure you guys stick around for the whole video because everything I'm going over for however long the remainder of this video is is going to be super important for setting up your Shopify store back end here. So make sure you follow along until the end. It may be boring, but this stuff is important for your success. So very first thing here is you got your store name at the top. Let me just open this up. Right here where it says store name, uh, what you put in this text box is going to be what displays next to your favicon up here in your tab. Uh, so that's another opportunity for you to put a keyword. Uh, the primary keyword you should be trying to take over there is obviously your store's name. So uh, right there, if my store's name is ZachHall.com, then you know I would just put this as just just put it as my name, and then maybe put a dash. Uh, you know I'll put a, a store. There we go. Something along those lines. Um, I know all this other information is blurred out to you guys here because uh, it, it does have my personal information and their phone number and, and address and everything. You get your store email and you got your customer email. So these ones right here, the first one would be your primary email that you're signing up for everything with. Uh, just the main email for your store. So we would put that right there in the store contact email and the customer email is where we would put your support email. So in the store address area, uh, you're going to have a few boxes in here. The first one is the legal name of your business. So if you are using um, a business license to run this store, which I would recommend. It's not necessarily something you have to have in the beginning when running your store, but it does have massive like tax benefits. So I would definitely encourage that you do it. And underneath that, you have to have your phone number and your address. Uh, there's no way around this. You have to have those on your store. Uh, like you can't take off your phone number. You can't take off your street address. You have to have those boxes filled out. Uh, it's not going to be something that customers are actually going to be able to see here unless you want them to see it. It's just for Shopify's purposes for for them to be able to contact your business and have a little bit more information about you within their system. Time zone pretty straightforward. You want your time zone to be in your time zone where you're at, so your timing displays correctly on your store. Uh, then your unit systems, Imperial if you're in the United States. Uh, then it would be metric if you're literally anywhere else in the world. The U.S. is weird about that. And uh, same thing with pounds and ounces. So. And down at the bottom, it is important that your store currency is set to your preferred store currency. Uh, so if you're in the U.S., make sure this is set up to U.S. dollars. And if you're in Canada, make sure this is set up to Canadian dollars, uh, Australia, Australia. Right, just make sure this is set up to your preferred way because once you get your very first sale, you can't change this, and you're going to be stuck with whatever your store currency is set on there. Next one, let's go over here to taxes. Okay, taxes, uh, not something that I collect on my store. So that's I'm collecting, I'm not collecting. But when you first set up your store, uh, taxes is going to have your, uh, based on the location that you're in. Uh, so, for example, I'm in Michigan. So Michigan sales tax is 6%. So whatever location that you're creating your store from, where the physical address is at, it's going to automatically be set to collect taxes from the state that your business is listed in or your address is listed in. So I'm in Michigan. My address is Michigan. So it's assuming I want to collect 6% sales tax here. Uh, what I'm running is drop shipping stores, so they're not necessarily a physical address. Um, and it's not something we actually ever handle. So I don't collect any sales tax here, period. I just take that off altogether. 
When it comes to taxes, I take that out of the profit of my products. I don't charge my customers that. I assume responsibility for that on my own when it comes to doing my tax. With, with taxes, take it or leave it how you will. It probably depends on how you're setting up your um, store. You know, if you're doing a physical brand where you actually have your own store and you're only selling within like a certain area or you're doing homemade crafts or whatever you're doing would probably determine how you would want to charge for your taxes. Drop shipping instance, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, my instance, I, I don't do it. Keep in mind, the more things that you're going to have popping up on your checkout screen prior to the customer clicking purchase is uh, going to drive them more and more away from the sale. And I'm going to be teaching a video in the future teaching you guys how to get sales tax exempt. And that's going to save you guys a ton of money when it comes to paying Uncle Sam. So definitely make sure you check that one out. I'm not sure exactly on the schedule here where it's going to fall, but uh, just make sure you guys check that out here in the near future when I release that video. Uh, next thing we have to go over here is your sales channels. So a sales channel allows you to integrate your Shopify store with other platforms. So for example, you can add in eBay here, Amazon, uh, sales channels that allow you to utilize other platforms traffic uh, to bring to your store. So I would definitely recommend integrating your store. It doesn't matter what type of selling you're doing here. I would, and then look into other additional channels to see if they make sense for you because you can utilize traffic from other platforms that are going to bring you more sales. And uh, when you get a sale, through those other platforms they they still integrate over here to your Shopify admin um, and they appear in your order section over here so if you get a sale through eBay it's still gonna pop up in your Shopify store and then you can integrate the information back and forth it doesn't cost you anything extra it's just an awesome thing to use um, especially in the beginning if you're on like a tight budget and you can't necessarily drive a bunch of traffic to your store then sales channels is going to allow you the opportunity to get your products in front of potential customers to start earning money and getting those sales. Payment providers is going to be one of the most important parts to this video that I really, really want you guys to listen to because I have some very important things that are going to save you tens of thousands of dollars. And I know one of the big controversies in the e-commerce world is, should you use PayPal with your store? My answer is yes, even though I've had a very bad negative experience with them where I had $25,000 on hold and then I was only able to get back, uh, it, was, it was all of it, but, but around $8,000. There's around $8,000 was what I haven't gotten back. I don't even want to say yet because I probably won't get it back. I've show you guys a couple tricks in here that uh, you should be doing so that doesn't happen to you. So this is a very important part. Make sure to watch this. So before you can start actually getting paid out from Shopify for your orders, you're going to have to select a plan down here at the bottom if you're a brand new store. People can still place orders and pay you, but you're not going to be able to get paid out until you select a plan and integrate your bank account and everything there. Uh, when starting out, you don't need to do anything more than just the basic plan of $29 a month. When it makes more sense for you to go up to a higher plan, uh, ultimately is when you start doing more and more volume with your revenue, more and more sales. Uh, because the next plan, let's just click here real quick. The next plan after the $29 a month is the $79 a month, so $50 difference there. Uh, but the benefits of upgrading your plan is going to be uh, your your rates, your percentage rates, so your online rate is going to be 0.3% difference there. So you would upgrade when it would offset. So when your fee is an additional 3% difference, you know, to break down the math there, how much money do you have to be doing in order for this to offset to actually save you more money when you upgrade your plan? You know what I mean? Because once you start doing a really high volume, does make more sense for you to use a larger plan because you actually save more money. So the two payment providers I would recommend, a little bit like I was saying before, was uh, PayPal for sure down here and uh, Shopify payments. And you'll get the gurus out there that are saying, don't use Shopify payments, don't use PayPal, integrate with somebody else like uh, Chase Merchant, for example. Uh, don't do that, guys, because if, if you use another payment gateway, Shopify's still going to charge a 2% gateway fee regardless on every single order. Shopify with, with the base package is already charging you a 2.99%. Uh, PayPal is a direct partner with Shopify so uh, they don't charge any additional on top of that. Unless it's an out of country transaction then it's a 4.44% rate I think um, through PayPal, just PayPal. But Shopify payments is a 2.99% rate plus a 30 cent transaction fee. But you don't want to use another payment processor because Shopify is going to charge you a gateway fee regardless there. So if you're using Chase Merchant, and let's say you negotiate a really good deal with them and you can get it for 1.5%, 
uh, for the credit card rate. Uh, then you got to account for Shopify's gateway fee as well. So it's actually going to be charging you a 3.5%. And you know, they're pretty fair system. The way their chargebacks and everything work uh, is, is, is pretty awesome. It's significantly less than PayPal, obviously. So just because some other place is showing a better credit card rate doesn't mean it's going to be a better deal for you. So the controversy around it is people say don't use PayPal because it's going to take your money, it's going to lock it, it's going to hold it. And let me explain this on why they do this. Everybody thinks that they're perfect and they're not doing anything wrong when in reality it's, it's because of your own doing on why your PayPal account is getting locked up and that they're holding your money. PayPal just wants to make sure that you are sending out your orders. They want to make sure that you are a legit business because they don't know who you are when you're starting out. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that the tracking numbers on all of our orders integrate over into PayPal system to match every order. Otherwise, they will lock up your money because they can't prove that you're shipping out your products to your customers. Even though you might be, they can't prove it on their end, so they hold your money until it can be proven. This was one of the things I didn't realize starting off in this space, and it ended up resulting in me getting $25,000 put on hold through them, which in the beginning is definitely a massive kick in the face. But uh, once I learned this trick, I haven't had any problems with it since. But we can use an app to directly integrate all of our tracking information over into PayPal so we don't have to do any manual work with it. And it's, it's pretty inexpensive to use too, but it's definitely necessary if you're going to be using PayPal with your store. Uh, you have to make sure you do that. And then the other reason why PayPal would lock your money on you is after a week or two of doing business with them, once you start getting some sales, regardless of if you're putting the tracking numbers over there or not, PayPal will lock your money and they're not going to allow you to withdraw it after that second week. But don't freak out. Every single PayPal account goes through this. They just want more information about you. They just want to make sure that you're a legit store, a legit person, sending out legit stuff, and you're not trying to scam anybody. Uh, don't go out of your way, though. I'll say this. Don't go out of your way with PayPal to let them know that you're a drop shipper because drop shipping, there's nothing wrong with it, but payment providers, they, they kind of look down on it. Payment providers, they, they just look down on it. But after that one to two weeks when your money gets locked up with PayPal and they're requesting more information. Just go through there, input all your information that it's asking for, and uh, it's usually after 72 hours you can get your whole PayPal account back to reinstated and everything's 100% again, and uh, you can start withdrawing all your money. So worst case scenario when that happens after that 72 hours is they might put like a 5% hold on your money. Uh, just because when you're a large, large retail, you're naturally gonna be getting more and more chargebacks to your store. So PayPal just wants to have money in the bank, I guess you can say, that doesn't come out of PayPal to just offset those chargebacks. That kind of makes sense to you. So with Shopify Payments, if you're a brand new store, go through the complete account setup section here. You don't have to be an official business to do this. It just makes it a little bit better for tax purposes. Another thing we want to touch on while we're in this screen is uh, where it says customer billing statement here. You can't see what it says, but the name of what your statement is and your phone number uh, this is a part that a lot of people skip over. So the phone number you sign up with your Shopify account is automatically going to be put into your customer's billing statement, which means that your phone number is going to show up on the description on your customer's bank account. So this is another thing that I didn't realize in the beginning. Customers are going to be the biggest headache in the world, and they're always going to be calling and complaining about something. Customer service is probably the most annoying part about running a store. Um, so when you have your phone number there and it goes over to your customer's banking information, then if you don't change this part right here, you're going to get lit up with phone calls like all the time, especially when you start doing high volume. So what I would recommend there is to go over to Google, create a forwarding number from Google Voice, and then put that Google Voice number in there. And then also below, just add your bank account information in there uh, so you can start getting paid out from your orders. Let's go back over. Let's finish up the settings section here. That was just really the bulk of this video, guys. If you made it through that, you've made it through a lot of the importance of this. But there's still some important stuff here we want to go over as far as uh, definitely in checkout. We want to go over some important stuff there. But uh, let's not shortcut success. Let's go into the next step. Locations. Uh, you don't even, I don't even need to click on this. Locations is just going to be a place where you can manage the different locations of your store like if you have multiple different retail physical locations this is where you would place them all and then it would help you differentiate differentiate orders over here to plans and permissions click on that so within your plans and permissions here this is another important screen so as you grow your store you're going to be getting more and more uh, hands on deck so when you hire out like virtual assistants to do different things with your stores uh, this is where you would come in and add, add them onto your store. So you would add a staff account, and then you can uh, delegate what 
permissions you want them to have on your store. So if you don't want them to have full permissions, you can unselect that and you can choose what it is you want them to do. Pretty straightforward. You send the invite in their email and then they uh, sign up from there. So in the future, also when you're looking to upgrade your plan, uh, this is where you would do it at in your plans and permissions. So right now, this is still in the trial mode. I haven't selected any plan as a trial store, just for an example. Uh, it would pop up right here, and then you could upgrade your plan. Uh, there would be a button where you can upgrade it, but if there, I guess, isn't that button, you could just click over here on Compare Plans, and it brings you back to the same uh, plan screen. You can upgrade from there. Let's say things go south with your store, or you just want to take a break. You come to this screen, you go to the very bottom, and uh, you have the option to pause your store or to close your store. Also, you can work with an expert right here too but that I guess is if you decide not to check out any of my future videos as I pretty much cover just about everything to do with Shopify and running an online e-commerce stores like all the tips tricks and secrets I throw it all out on my YouTube for free so wink wink alright just a little bit more back to settings uh, next one to check out this is exactly how you're gonna wanna set up your checkout because some of this stuff is legally required to be like this so your accounts, set that to optional. The reason you want to set that to optional is because it would display a login section up here. Uh, it would actually give a customer an account. It's just a good lead generation area where you can capture more information from them. So they're optional uh, rather than just as guests. Like you can capture their emails and their phone numbers a lot easier when you have this as optional, which is good for your retarget marketing. That, uh, check out. Customers can check out using either a phone number or email. Correct. They can use both. Uh, full name, yep, we have to require first and last name. Company name, I always hide that. I don't put anything to do with company name in there. So company name, I keep that hidden. Line address 2, optional. Shipping phone number, I leave that one set to optional as well. And then we got, while well, the customer is checking out, yep, we're going to use, uh, by default, it'll automatically put the shipping address over to the billing address. People can change that if they want to after it's, and then they'll have the option to uh, autocomplete, yep, that's good. So after an order has been placed, we don't want to we don't automatically want to fulfill any orders in the line because that's going to mess up our order exporting process for fulfilling. Uh, trust me on that. That's a song for another time in another video. But uh, make sure this is set to do not automatically fulfill. Uh, automatically archived. Yup. This is an important part within the checkout here. The pre-select to sign up option you think would be good, but you can't actually have this thing set up to pre-select. Because it's actually illegal to do it when you dig into it uh, for, for your email marketing and your text message marketing purposes. So legally standing, we can't pre-select the sign-up option here if we're going to be doing retarget marketing with email and uh, text message marketing. So definitely, definitely, definitely make sure that you don't have that selected. You're going to be throwing yourself into a potential disastrous situation in the future. So, And then also with checkout language, this is where we would come to in the future when we're setting up some of our apps on our store. We would come back here. And we have to uh, change around some of the checkout language, like for our text message marketing, our email marketing. You'll see that in future videos. So settings, we'll head back. Uh, after that, we got notifications. So we won't dive too deep into notifications because there's about a million and a half of them. So the main thing we have to focus on here, your order confirmation notification. Ooh, that rhymes. Make sure you put in here somewhere. Uh, where people can go and track their orders. So what I use is 17track.net. So I would just put in here, you can track your order status 17track.net. So the reason I use 17track and I promote 17track for people to use to track their order status is that 17track integrates with every single shipping provider in the world so the status with every single shipment in the world is going to be through 17 track and it's really one of the most powerful systems in my opinion uh, for tracking your orders so when you're drop shipping like i do a lot of my orders typically tend to come from overseas you know so it's just an easy way to track tracking numbers uh, from out of country here for me so 17 track.net is definitely an awesome one to check out so make sure you look into that okay so notifications went over that billing so the billing is where you're going to be able to manage your credit cards that you have on file here. So this is where you would add your card onto your Shopify store, and they charge in a 30-day cycle. So that means all the charges that your store has acquired within the past 30 days are going to be charged once a month. So it's not like uh, you're going to get charged every single day that you spend something on your store. It's in a 30-day period. So all your charges will display here in your billing section. 
but if you want a full financial overview of all your billing, uh, you can click over here on View Financial Overview, and it's also going to show you the payouts. Uh, you can view all that there as well within your financial overview. Just an important spot to come in the future for your bookkeeping. Uh, keeps you a little bit more organized, so back step. Okay, shipping. I'm going to set this one up live time with you. To set up our shipping policies, we would come over here to Manage Rates. Okay, and to create a new shipping zone, click on that. And then we would name our zone, this can be whatever you want to name it. It's not going to be displayed to the customer right here. And then select rest of world, um, or you can go through, if you're only selling specifically to the United States, just select the United States or but wherever you want to ship to. Uh, done. And then scroll down to it. And on your shipping zone that we just created there, uh, you want to add a rate, and we want to make sure it's set up with our own rate. And our rate name is going to be shipping and handling for the first one. And then we're going to set the cost. This is just what was worked best for me, $5.99. There's not going to be any conditions. Any order that somebody places with us, unless it's over $75, is going to be $5.99. So add the second rate. Uh, again, set up your own rate. This is going to be called priority. Insured. So this is our priority insured option here. Where people have the opportunity to purchase that. Just a little more, first a little more security and to expedite the process a little bit. Uh, so that's going to be a nine ninety nine option. Okay, and um, again, that works with anything. It doesn't matter what price it is on the store, unless it's you know it's always something people can purchase additionally. Um, even if it's over the 75 and the next option we're going to set is our free shipping so just name that free shipping and the cost is going to be um, free let me add a condition here it's based on the order's price of 75 dollars uh, so in order to qualify for free shipping you have to have a minimum price um, of your order for 75 bucks Okay, great. And then we save it. It's that simple to set up your shipping policy. Back to settings. Uh, we don't need to click on this one as well. Files is just where you're going to upload your images, videos, and your documents, like it says there. So this is where you manage all the media on your website. So if you want to delete a picture, for example, you can't do it in any other place except here. And the last step here is your legal. And your and your legal needs to be and your legal needs to be set up because all of these pages, even if you have a refund policy page separate. Um, from here or if you have a privacy policy separate from here terms all this stuff even if it's separate from here You still have to set these up because they're gonna link over into your checkout page at the bottom in the footer area They'll have your refund policy and your privacy policy in terms all that stuff there um, On your checkout page when you're when the customer is checking out it has to be presented to them So it's pretty easy to do all we have to do within here is create it from a template <laughs> Same thing here just creates it from a template create from template and then shipping policy based on whatever your shipping policy is, you would paste that in there. Um, I have a shipping policy available, I think, in another video. And there's a couple things within here that you'd have to change, like your address or phone number or, or whatever. Just go through and read and uh, change what needs to be changed within here. And then, yeah, you would save it. This wasn't exactly a short video, but your settings are a very important part to the success of your store. Uh, there's a couple times we're going to have to reference back to here, so I just wanted to make you guys familiar with the settings so that you know what I'm talking about in future videos. Is now that that's set up, it's time to start making some money. With so let's jump over to the more fun stuff like setting up your store and how to market and how you can find massively profitable products without taking up any more of your time, guys. I really appreciate you watching this video today. I hope it helped you out. Um, if you have any additional questions, make sure to drop them in the comment section below. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and turn on that post notification bell so you always get notified when a new video is coming out because in most of my videos here, I'm dropping tips and tricks that you really can't find anywhere else on the internet. And we'll see you over on the next video.